Hi friends, thank you so much for joining us in our podcast today. This is the topic on God Communicates Part 2. And in today's topic, I will be sharing on the various ways and means that God can communicate with us. And uh, that's what we want to do and I want to encourage you, let's come on that journey. You know, when you look at the way the world has been created, you look at the pictures of the galaxies and all that, you notice one thing, one very incredible thing is that our God is an incredibly creative God. And I believe that as believers, we can be trained to receive from the Lord. He wants us to receive from Him. He wants to share His heart with us, His purposes with us. Therefore, each of us would need to, in other words, continually exercise our spiritual senses in order to be receptive towards the Lord when He communicates with us. Well, how does He do that? He does it through a variety of ways. Let's learn to tune in. Firstly, Habakkuk's experience. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 to 2, we have here it says, I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. Here was Habakkuk who had a matter to bring before the Lord, and he waited for the answer, and God did communicate with him, and that was his experience. Another means that God can speak to us or can communicate with us is through prophetic words. In 2 Kings 20, 1 to 11, words spoken through prophets, or even in these days, because we have the Holy Spirit in us, he does speak through other believers into our lives as well. So in 2 Kings 20, 1 to 11, we have here a situation in the Bible where King Hezekiah was very sick. He was at the point of death. Yet in his, as he cried out to the Lord, God answered him through the prophet Isaiah in verse 5 of 2 Kings 20. It says here, Thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. On the third day you shall go up to the house of the Lord, and I will add 15 years to your life. And, you know, friends, it's so important to also value what God has spoken through His children, His servants, the prophets, into our lives. I remember a time when um, one of my leaders, um, she asked to be prayed for and uh, I was just praying for her. And then I saw a vision of what you know, it may or could be like. And so I, I asked her, is it okay if I share this with you? And, I, I, and she said, yeah. So when I shared with her, um, I had a vision of her like being surrounded by fire. Uh, but I also saw that she was not harmed or in any way, um, you know, uh, in any way uh, uh, touched by the fire, the, uh, the embers and so forth. And, uh, but I, I sensed that's the strong presence of God protecting her when she was going through that season. And uh, this fellow leader of mine, um, she, she just took that word and she placed it on the shelf because it was not something that she was going through at that point of time. But she shared with me later on, about two years later, that she went through exactly what was shown to her, what was prophesied over her. She learned to just place it on the shelf and learn to receive that communication and learn to test it. And because of that, she received strength from the Lord to go through that difficult season. And true enough, God's protection was on her. Another means that God can speak to us is also through the written Word of God, the Bible. A scripture that may pop up into your mind when you're reading the verse or is being highlighted to you personally. It's, that's why it's good for us to each day on a daily basis get God's Word into our lives and let God 
speak to us something personal from his word. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. And I truly love the word of God and I encourage you to ask God, Lord, grant me that spiritual hunger for your word more and more. And as we do so, we find the Lord communicating with us even through his written word. Fourthly, I want to bring to you, God can communicate with us through an audible voice or inner voice, like in 1 Kings chapter 19, 11 to 13 for the prophet Elijah. You see, the audible voice or the inner voice is likened to the still small voice of God. It comes from closely relating with the Lord. And that's why I want to encourage you, build on your relationship with God, relate with Him, know His heart, commune with Him when God can speak to us from within our spirit. In 1 Kings 19, here was Elijah. He was, you know, he was uh, under so much uh, stress. He was tired. So he went to hide himself even away from the Lord. There was a powerful wind. There was an earthquake. Then there was a fire. But the Lord was not in all that. But after the fire came a gentle whisper. Then a voice said to Elijah, What are you doing here, Elijah? God spoke, God communicated with Elijah when he was so discouraged. 1 Samuel 3 verses 1 to 10, this was uh, uh, the time of Samuel himself, a young fella. He, he had not heard the voice of God at that time. He had not heard, uh, you know, they had not received any uh, word from the Lord for a long time. But he encountered something of the Lord. God called him three times, but Samuel thought it was Eli calling for him. That's why Samuel went to Eli and said, yes, you know. And when Eli realized that it could be the Lord speaking to Samuel. So on the fourth call of the Lord upon Samuel, Samuel said, speak for your servant hears. You know, here it tells me something. God is very patient with us. He desires each and every one of us to know Him when He shows up. So be alert, be open to hear the voice of your Master, of your Lord. John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice. Yeah, and God knows us. And that's why I want to encourage you, be open to God's communication. I remember I had a recent encounter. Now we've gone through uh, pandemic COVID-19. Um, sometime in late February uh, last year, just prior to COVID-19 being issued as a pandemic by WHO, um, I encountered a, a health issue, uh, which was surprisingly, for, which was a surprise and a shock in some ways. And uh, two weeks prior to that announcement, I had a health issue that cropped up and uh, it was kind of a shock. And, you know, and, and how, how do you receive things like that? And went to the doctors and, and I had to wait for the results to come back um, uh, for me. And I remembered asking the Lord and praying and I say, Father, this is such a, not an easy time to be sick because it looks like things are heating up and I'm not quite sure what is expected. Um, and, and so I asked the Lord, I, I went to the Lord and I prevail upon the Lord to heal me supernaturally. And, uh, and I thank God that he came through for me. He spoke to my heart even before I got my test results. And he said to me, you are fine. The still small voice of God, you are fine. I've healed you. You are fine. And I received that. God's promise and I just give him thanks and give him praise and true enough the following week when I got to my results everything was fine and truly friends how important it is for us to know that God can communicate with us and grant us strength encouragement in times when things are going haywire we can trust him because he is our God now Another way that God can also speak to us, besides, you know, his um, small, still voice and, and his prophetic words, and as we seek him and, and we get the answers from him, is through dreams. Virtual reality dreams occur 
when while we sleep and they remain in our mind after waking up. Just like in Daniel chapter 2 verses 31 to 35, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and Daniel was the one who was able from the Lord's empowerment relate to the king his dream before the king brought it up to him and interpreted it for him as God showed him. Sometimes a reality dream is also possible for God to communicate with us. It's like a real experience we have while sleeping that we remember after waking up like an encounter with God. We see this here in um, Genesis 20 verses 6 to 7 when God spoke and appeared to Abimelech, uh, uh, the king of Gerah, about in the dream, spoke to him because the king Abimelech was interested in Sarah, Abraham's wife. He didn't know that this was Abraham's wife. He thought that Sarah was the sister. But God in his goodness um, appeared to him in the dream and told him that he is, he is there to keep him from sinning against the Lord and therefore said to him, do not take this woman on. And so and return Sarah back to Abraham for that, for the woman is Abraham's wife. So here we can see the Lord can also speak to us through dreams. And um, it's so important when we get dreams, if you're not sure, can I encourage you? Journal it down, write some quick notes and continue to ask the Lord, God, what are you trying to say to me through this dream? I wanna share with you an encounter that I had uh, through dreams. I do get dreams, quite often. And there was this particular one, it was the early times when I learned to walk in the prophetic. Um, I had a dream of one of my uh, our younger leaders. Um, I was working with him, he's like an assistant to me. And I had this dream, it was like, a, in the dream itself, I saw like a storybook chapter by chapter, what was happening in his life. I knew uh, from that dream that you know, the Lord gave me, it's got to be tested, of course, uh, that he was going through a situation that he kept away from others. And, uh, um, and that was really drawing him away from the purposes of God. And so after much prayer and also counsel, uh, you know, um, with my husband, uh, we invited him over to our place. And I shared that dream with him. And I said to him humbly, I said, does it make sense to you? You know, he turned pale because he saw, he knew that that was something from the Lord because nobody else knew about this situation, but God revealed it through a dream to me. And my heart and encouragement to him was get back on track with the Lord, come back to him. And I thank God that he did. Of course, he struggled with that, but he did a year later where he came back in repentance before the Lord and began to walk with the Lord again. So friends, God can speak to us through different, very creative means. Another way is that of pictures and visions, where some of you might get snapshots or images or mind's eye vision, where it's like the Lord projecting images and pictures on the screens of your minds, or you may see an open vision, something that you see with your natural eyes, um, like in a role of a movie and things like that. Ask the Lord for the message behind the revelation. In Acts chapter 16, verse 9 to 11, during that night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him. He said, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, they got ready at once to leave for Macedonia. God communicated with Paul through a vision for help that is needed in Macedonia. Another thing that is incredibly extraordinary, Balaam's donkey, okay, the extraordinary, I call it, in Numbers 22, verse um, to 24. Here you see Balaam's donkey, you know, Balaam is a prophet, was a prophet, and he was on his way to deliver the message. He, he, had, he was enticed by riches and all that. And God, um, you know, like it was like God coming through for him, helping him see that what he was doing was not right before the Lord. And so, uh, and so the Lord sent the angel and, uh, to, to, to stop um, Balaam from going forward. And the, the, 
the, the donkey saw the angel and so, you know, moved sideways and, and, and then Balaam was angry with the donkey and, and struck the, his own donkey three times. And in verse 28, here it says, Numbers 22, Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey and she said to Balaam, What have, you, what have I done to you that you have struck me this three times? And the donkey said to Balaam, verse 30, Am I not your donkey on which you have ridden all your life long to this day? Is it my habit to treat you this way? And verse 31, Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam. Yeah, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand, and he bowed down and fell on his face. I pray that we would be receptive to the Lord. I pray that we would not have maybe our pet dogs talking to us back because of the stubborn heartedness in us. But let's be receptive before the Lord. When He speaks to us, He can use extraordinary ways to speak to our lives. Another means is that of Jesus in Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. Hebrews chapter 1, it says, In the past God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, through whom He made the universe. Friends, I've heard of many different testimonies where people, perhaps from nations that are not friendly or responsive to Christianity, where they have testified, pre-believers even, testified that they had visitations from Jesus where the Lord spoke to them, where the Lord appeared to them. And so God can do that as well. Another way is through impressions, an inner knowing in your heart, a sensing from within your heart. You know, are there times that you have felt cautioned by the Lord not to take a particular uh, way or uh, that perhaps you have promised someone else or it's logical, but God spoke to you, gave you the impression that this is not the way to go. And this is a judgment call that you need to make before the Lord. I, I remember having to make uh, judgment calls like this as I felt the impression in my heart from the Lord. And, and, this is what, and those times I just say, God, I choose to trust you because I've heard your small, still voice before. I know when you are speaking. Yeah, and, and that's why I want to encourage you. Be sensitive to the Lord. Another way is the quickened word of God. You know, some Christian circles call that rhema word that which is spoken that which is uttered in speech or writing you know where god the spirit of god impresses upon you and brings to your memory scriptures or things that have been spoken you know in the word of god into you and that's why it's good for us each day to allow god's word to renew our mind so that the spirit of god can come and renew us on a daily basis I remember this particular God moment. I can tell you this is amazing. In Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This scripture is so personal to me. You see, I was going for my driving test. And, uh, but I was nervous because a fortnight prior to that day, uh, we met with a, a, a bad accident that was not of our making. And... Um, and so I, I was going and I was still processing, you know, that, that quote unquote traumatic event. And, um, and I remembered, but because my provisional license, or you call it the L license in most nations, uh, was going to expire, I had to sit for this test. And I was nervous, incredibly nervous. And prior to going for the actual uh, drive, um, I, I went to seek the Lord quickly, you know. And the Lord spoke to my heart. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It was like, poof, God gave me that, that real boost in, in confidence in knowing that He is with me as I lean upon Him. And I receive that scripture deep into my heart and say, Lord, I'm going to trust you for this driving test. I don't know what to expect of it, but I know you're with me. And true enough, the Lord was with me. 
and he helped me through the entire driving test. I passed it. Even the one who was testing me was amazed at how I parked. And truly, I can tell you, I cannot repeat that because it is really under God's anointing. The quickened word of God. A couple of things quickly, nature. God can also speak to us, communicate to us through nature. In Romans 1 verse 20, it says, For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. You know, nature, as you look at the beautiful natural things that God has made, do you realize that God can speak to us through nature? As I take walks with my husband to waterfalls, we have to go through sometimes to go further, walk in through the forest and the unbeaten track. God, when I look at the waterfalls, the first thing God reminds me is that God is the one who refreshes me. His word refreshes me. His word is life to me. And that's how when I look at waterfalls, I'm reminded who my God is. God was able to refresh, God was able to, you know, revive, God was able to renew and restore. And so God does speak through creation. And another thing quickly is that of circumstances. You know, God can speak to us and direct us through the circumstances of our lives. Can I encourage you? Ask the Lord when you're going through tough times, especially valley times, ask the Lord, show me God. What is it that I can learn from you in these times? And lastly, prophetic arts through songs, dances, paintings. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach, as you admonish one another with all wisdom, as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. God does can speak to us through such means as well. Can I say to you in summary, God speaks to us differently to different individuals, how we've been wired so that we can understand more of what he has in mind for us. The key is, friends, is to discern between what is of our human soul and what the Spirit of God is wanting to reveal to us. And it takes maturity in our walk with God to do so. Let's embark on that journey. Let's embark on that journey. And can I also say all that you hear all that you see, all that you perceive, they must not contradict with God's written word. The Bible is your sure safeguard and benchmark. So can I encourage you? There are some discussion questions that will be available to you. Perhaps you can share with one another. What is, your, how has your journey been like? What is God showing you at such a time? What is, how does God communicate with you? Or how else would you love to have the Lord communicate with you? Because you are God's beloved child. He wants to communicate with you. Be blessed. Amen.